section 1.2, day 3, expanding a little bit further and finally finishing section 1.2. We're going to be talking about degrees, minutes, and seconds and finding degree measures of the hands of a clock. One degree measure equals 60 minutes, which is designated by the 60 with a little tick mark. One minute is equal to 60 seconds, which is designated by the two tick marks. So every degree has 60 minutes, every minute has 60 seconds. Our goal in the first two examples is changing minutes and seconds. So we're changing the degree measure, which is in, in degrees, into minutes and seconds. We don't like the 5, 6 there. So we want to convert the 83 into 5, 6. So we split it up into 83 plus 5, 6. Well, the 83 is okay. We need to convert this 5, 6 to how many minutes? Well, how many minutes are there? There are 60 minutes in a degree. So this is 5, 6 of a degree. So we're going to take the 5, 6, multiply it by... 60 and we get our final answer of 83 degrees 50 minutes example 2 14.9 so we want to convert this well you can either convert this to 0.9 or you can leave it and break it up as as 14 plus 0.9 that means this is 14 plus 0.9 times 60 which gives you an answer of 14 degrees, 54 minutes. Example three, we're going the opposite way. We're converting 58 degrees, 24 minutes into a degree measure with a fraction. So once again, break it up, 58 degrees plus 24 minutes. Well, what can you do? 58 is okay. We need to convert this into a fraction. Well, the 24 minutes is out of how much is out of 60. So then 58 will stay, and then you can simplify 24 over 60 to 2 fifths. So you got 58 degrees. 58 and 2 fifths degrees. Example 4. We know that WRT, WRT is 23 degrees, 14 minutes, and 47 seconds. Angle QRW is what we want to find. And we know that QRT equals 90 degrees because of the right angle in the corner. So we could find what's missing by subtracting 90 from this number right here. Well, what does that look like? We're doing 90 minus 23, 14, 47. Well, to be able to subtract these two, you have to borrow. So the 90 becomes 89, and then you have 60 minutes. But wait, you still don't have seconds. So you could borrow from the seconds, 1, and you get 60 minutes. Now you can actually subtract them, and you could get 13 seconds, 45 minutes, and then 66 degrees for your final answer. The final section is going to be finding the measurement of, the, of an angle by designating the hands of a clock. So first off, you have to be able to tell time on a clock. So you would draw yourself a clock and you want the time to be 2 o'clock. So at 2 o'clock, that means the big hand is at the 12, and the little hand is on the 2. So first off, we need to figure out how many degrees are between each angle. Well, you should know that in a circle, there's 360 degrees. There is how many numbers on a clock? 12. So if you take 360 and divide it by 12, you will learn that there is 30 degrees between each set of numbers. Well, if the big hand's at the 12 and it's also at the 2, you have 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here. So at 2 o'clock, the hands 
make a 60 degree angle. Example six, we have 515. So draw yourself a clock. No, the big hand is at the 15. The little hand is not on the 5, but it's between the 5 and the 6, closer to the 5 because there's only 15 minutes that have passed. So we start at the big hand like we did over here. We count, we have 30 here and we have 30 here, so we at least have 60. We need to figure out how much is left over between the 5 and how much the 15 made. All right. Well, looking at that, we know there's 15 minutes. There's always 60 minutes on a clock. We can simplify 15 over 60, giving you 1 fourth. That means you moved one fourth of the way from the five to the six, and there's 30 degrees between the two hands. So you multiply by 30, giving you seven and a half degrees. So that's this part right here, seven and a half degrees. So the whole thing is 30, 60, 60, seven and a half degrees. The last example. The time is 10, 10. So we got the big hand on the 2 for the being the 10. And then the little hand is between the 10 and 11, closer to the 10. We said always, always count from the big hand first. So we have 30, 60, 90, and then the hands between here. So we know we at least have 90 degrees. Well, now we have 10. Do the same thing we did in the last example. 10 out of 60, which is 1 sixth. So we moved 1 sixth of the way from the 10 to the 11 out of 30 degrees. That ends up equaling 5 degrees. But wait, 5 degrees is from the 10 to the hand. So that means how much is left inside of this angle. Well, that would be the 30 minus the 5, so you are doing 25 degrees right here, and you have your final angle of 30, 60, 90, 1, 15. This brings us to the end of section 1.2.